Hey everyone, it's Brad Hornby here and welcome back to my YouTube channel and we are entering September. First weekend of September means it's Labor Day. Yes, the Labor Day Classic is on with my Calgary Stampeders taking on the Hems and Elks up the road, the QE2. For the Battle of Alberta, I'm gonna say this year, this Battle of Alberta Labor Day Classic is gonna be interesting in terms of where both teams are in the standings right now. This is the first Labor Day Classic in a long time where you could say both teams are struggling, and one of the bottom teams in the CFL as Calgary is. 3-8, and eight. we definitely had a brutal, tough stretch in August where we only went 1-3, and three, but we played the Toronto Argonauts twice, throwing a game against the BC Lions and the Winnipeg Blue Bombers. Well, the Enton Elks, they are actually looking not too bad. Well, they're still 2-9, and nine, but they have won the last two games, including the win, the big one at home against the Ottawa Red Blacks to end their 22 home game losing streak. I mean, how to measure both teams coming in. Calgary 3-8, and eight, what we've played against the top teams in the CFL in this past month. Edmonton 2-9, but they beat Hamilton and Ottawa. The last two games, you can argue to say these Eels are the weaker teams in the CFL right now. Well, I would still say this has playoff implications potentially for both sides. I think we're going to need to look east for potentially any Alberta teams to make the playoffs. Because just after about well, to record this, I just finished watching the Labor Day Sunday game. And that was a classic where the Saskatchewan Rough Riders, they won that one 32-30 in overtime. And it was... As a two-point conversion stop that sealed the win for the Skatch and Ruffer. Is we going to get that kind of classic tomorrow? You don't know. It, it's a little cliche. You can almost throw away the records on Labor Day. You can say that for the case. Calgary Stamp Peters, I'm going to say if we can give our offense like we did against the Toronto Argonauts, I guess you'd say almost a week and a half ago, we did lose a tough one. 38 to 31, because we allowed a punt return for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. But if we can get 200 yards out of Reggie Bagleton, and the fact that Kadeem Carey and Tommy Lee Lewis will be back in the lineup for the Calgary offense, I think if we can close up our D, we should be able to uh, take care of this. However, finally, the Edmonton Elks, just to be fair and a CFL fan, I gotta wonder what took them so long to finally decide. Maybe Taylor Cornelius is not the starter. Well, it's Trey Ford, who's been the quarterback the last couple of games where they won, including that big one against Ottawa in the end their 22-game home losing streak. And he was the quarterback in Hamilton, where they finally snapped their losing streak going back this year because this team looked like they were going to go 0-18. So you've got Calgary still banged up, beaten up. Lost some tough ones against the top teams in the league, but can't close out the deal, which is both the case last year. Well, you got the Hampton Elks. They have uh, won two in a row, boosting their conference. Working small, so going to be intrigued to see the matchup. I know Kevin Brown for the Hampton Elks also has been a nice find for their running game as well from last year. So hopefully we'll see a classic tomorrow. Of course, I'm always going to be pulling for the Calgary Stampeders, and you know, reds are color. They actually are going to be wearing their black jerseys at home at McMahon Stadium. This won't be until a 5 p.m. kickoff, obviously Labor Day on Monday, September the 4th. But it's always, always an anticipated game between the two rivals. And I'm going to say this one will potentially have playoff implications. This, this could either get both either team on track. It'll definitely play huge dividends if one side can sweep the other. 
and I'm going to still say after, especially that win, and how Saskatchewan has looked the last few weeks, I think the top three teams is definitely going to be William Fake, BC, and Saskatchewan. We might have to look at the crossover route, as we'll see what happens with the first Labor Day game tomorrow between Toronto and Hamilton. But Ottawa, they're down at 3-8 and eight as well. They're off this week, but we're going to have to possibly look at the crossover. Just like Edmonton, to have a chance to get in the playoffs. But, of course, I'm always excited for the Labor Day Classic. And uh, I actually did set out the last two home games for the Calgary Stampeders. But I think I'll definitely be in the stands tomorrow. Hopefully, the rain holds up. They're forecasting showers and hopefully not too smoky. But I'm definitely going to be in the stands cheering for the Calgary Stampeders. And, of course, you know, try to capture... Uh, the traditional, you know, coin toss and the Jets flying overhead for appreciation for the armed forces. But there's definitely a lot at stake, a lot of play, more than just, you know, provincial pride at stake with the Battle of Alberta. Who's mightier, Calgary or Edmonton at this stage? Well, both teams are definitely looking up at the West and I think might be having to look, looking East, but eventually get into the playoffs. And then take our chances as the third place Eastern team. Keep in mind the crossover, if you don't know, is the fourth place team in the West needs to have a much better record team in the third place team in the East Division. And season series and tie break is out. It has to be a clear cut, better record. So uh, I'm going to still say that's the only hope that both teams have at this stage, but that's not going to throw away the, the intensity. I mean, I think. Flames and Oilers games when both teams are not relevant, still at each other. It's more fun when both teams are relevant, and same with the CFL, but uh, it's Labor Day. That's all we could say. CFL family, just tell them it's Labor Day. This is the, uh, the biggest weekend of the regular season. Of course, the playoffs and then the Grey Cup itself, but I am definitely ready. I'm always probably cheering for the Calgary Stampeders. It's been tough being red this season, but I'm going to say it's probably been tougher to be Emerald Green as well for both Alberta teams. I don't know if we can console each other that way, but uh, it's all thrown out the window this week because uh, whatever happens on Monday, we'll try it again on Saturday up in Commonwealth. So, so I'll close it out. If you want to follow along with this Calgary sports fans journey, just... Uh, Make sure you hit like and subscribe, and of course you know what side I go on when it comes to the Battle of Alberta and teams to cheer for, not just with the you know, CFL, but of course on the ice. I know there's no lacrosse team up in Edmonton, but that's where I go. And then, of course, I did recently enjoy doing my vlogging on the go at the Eau Claire Market uh, at the uh, Reminisce. My time there as well, so I'm more than just a Calgary Sports fan, so if that all sounds like an interest to watch, just uh, make sure you hit like, subscribe, I have my other social media links down in the description below, but now it's all about Labor Day. Go Stamps, go. Let's get the season back on the right track, and let's get Edmonton out of our misery, and then try to take care of our own business, but I'm still thinking that the crossover, especially after the... Uh, Labor Day Sunday game is looking more like that's what we're going to have to hope for. We're going to need some help. Let's help our own cause first. Take care of the Elks, but to me, they're always going to be the Eskimos. So I'll see you in the next video.